Reluctant Preppers provides educational awareness and commentary only. Opinions expressed do not constitute personalized financial advice. Viewers are encouraged to do their own research and seek qualified personal financial consultation before making investment decisions. Hey, Reluctant Preppers. If you haven't heard, we've already started our monthly one ounce U.S. Silver Eagle thank you gift to one active Patreon subscriber each month, signed by your host, Donegan Kaiser. And you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctant preppers. Does your family ever get exasperated with you for stockpiling such things as paper towels, bottled water, or toilet tissue? Well, they certainly can't object to you stockpiling money silver the only money recognized by the u.s constitution and your first 10 ounce purchase of pure silver can be had at spot price with no premium by going to sdbullion.com rp and when you buy it that way you'll be supporting reluctant preppers as well by going to sdbullion.com rp thanks as a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it we ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We were glad when this guest said he'd come back on again after he visited us recently to talk about being locked out of our accounts. Gregory Manorino, the Robin Hood of Wall Street, is back in our corner and with us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Greg, thanks for joining us again. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're always uh, very popular with our viewers. They've got so many questions for you. I'm just going to have to pick and choose a few of them. But first, before we get to viewers' questions, I was just hoping you could give us a brief update. I've been paying close attention to your multi-podcasts uh, per day about the fake market and how we can <laughs> not be thrown off by that, but come to re just realizing that uh, do what we can to uh, benefit from it. So in a nutshell, if you want to give people kind of your your take on um, where things are at and where they seem to be going in the general trends and what we can do about it to take care of our families and our and our take care of number one, regardless of how fake the uh, the markets are that we're facing. Here's the beauty of it. The beauty of it is knowing that these markets are fake. I mean, look, I'm not I can't. I'm not kidding. When I say this to people, sometimes I get chuckles and I get less, but it's not real. There's not, and, and I mean this, I don't care what asset you want to look at today, not one uh, anymore has a real price discovery mechanism behind it. In other words, I mean, just to so for people who can understand this, what, what do we know has been going on for now an entire decade? The largest part of the market, the debt market has been artificially rigged by uh, central banks, our central bank, the Federal Reserve, we'll stick to that one since we're here in the United States, but all central banks are doing the same thing. They're artificially suppressing interest rates. How do they do this? They can't just say it, they don't have magical powers, they actually have to get into the market and buy the debt. Um, so this is what they've been doing now. And this, I mean, this was instituted on purpose. I want people to understand this as well. And it's, it's almost criminal. In fact, it is criminal if you think about it. What they've done here um, is create an environment where anyone who wants to maybe save save money or doesn't want to be in, invested in the stock market has been punished for not being into the stock market. They've deliberately created this environment of risk. Mm -hmm. It's That's what they've deliberately done to reinflate uh, the stock market bubble. That's what we're in right now. But again, the, the, I don't believe central banks should be doing this. Uh, and especially now for an entire decade is created unimaginable. And I, that's another thing I'm not uh, overstressing here. It's, it, it's unimaginable distortions in the market. And we know what world central banks are going to continue to do. They're going to collude with their respective government or wh whoever is actually running the show, it is the central banks that are running the show, um, to keep the easy money coming in here. Um, and, you know, this is going to continue to rob savers, uh, anyone with an interest earning account, uh, while it opens that doorway for cash to flow into the stock market. This is the mechanism that's been going on now for an entire decade. Uh, I want it to end. I want a real market. We do not have one. And you've pointed out in your discussions um, that 
even uh, so you, you go down the list like interest bearing accounts you just mentioned um, uh, that certainly savings accounts certificates of deposit those are no good even buying you know, like savings bonds or or or, uh, or treasury bonds or whatever those are yielding nothing and you then, gotta be nuts and yeah. then but even uh, retirement accounts and pensions are also heavily invested uh, in the market but they have to you've you've talked about the demographics and the pressure that they have to make their seven percent whatever they've got to make to stay about to stay afloat and they can't make that anymore um, in the usual ways so that forces them into a risk posture as well yeah well there's no doubt about that look things like we, we you're talking about right now these are linked or uh, well, linked to debt instruments. What do we know about that? It, it's a it's a bubble, so that's going to burst. And I, look, this is what people need to know. And I'm sure that your followers are aware of of this, probably more than anybody else out here. The middle class, no matter how you want to look at it, no matter how you want to cut this pie, no matter how much you may be thinking about or dreaming about that, there's going to be some utopia coming down the, the, the parkway and happening. The middle class, once again, is going to suffer and on a grand scale like they have no idea. Well, maybe you're like I said, maybe your followers understand how bad this can potentially be and i think the potential for this to unfold in a worst case scenario is growing every day uh it's not getting better because the distortions are getting larger central banks are now the lenders of last resort they have been for a while and they will keep doing this they never had a plan to get out of this to unwind it in a normal way where it would not be disruptive to the average guy or girl on the street uh knowing that I mean, you know, it's it's not too hard to understand how this can potentially unfold, uh, not just here in the United States, but global unrest like we've never seen, like the Great Depression times 10. Uh, it'll be much worse than the last time for many, many reasons. Um, it's just a shame to watch this and, and see the rigging, the faking going on, the people out here who believe that uh, there were many that were, that believed that after the midterms, there was going to be some kind of a utopia out here. It's only gotten worse. It's only going to get worse from here. It's not going to get better. But the distortions in the market are going to continue until we hit the wall. When we hit the wall, it's very simple to know when this is. And I've been talking about this forever. People don't know where to look. They're being distracted. They're told to look at the, the, the stock market. Look at the stock market. How can you look at, you can't watch the stock market to pretty much speculate on where it's going to go. You have to look at other aspects of this market. I put it very simply. It's like watching some guy or girl walk across the street and you're watching. They're looking all fine as they're walking across the street, but you're not watching the freight train coming at them. So that's the scenario we're at. So in other words, to gauge what we're seeing, where the market is likely going to go, we have to follow the bond market, period. The bond market has been the, the instrument that world central banks have chosen to rig because it's the largest part of the, the market by exponents then to the, the debt market. Now, the dollar is playing a big role uh, as of late, especially. And that's geopolitical, all kinds of issues that are going on with that too. But by... By one, at one point, we are going to have an uncontrollable, uncontrollable sell-off in the bond market. In other words, where we've been watching this now for well, I've been watching it for for it seems like time immemorial, but for especially lately here, every time we get a sell-off in the bond market and rates start to climb because there's an inverse relationship here, some mysterious entity gets in here and starts buying up those bonds keeping rates suppressed who would that be i mean it's pretty simple to understand it's the federal reserve it can't be anyone else maybe it's the wall street banks colluding with them they're working a concert together to buy the debt they have no choice if the bond market debt market bond market were allowed to determine fair value because mm -hmm. that's their only job of these markets no one is smart enough not even believe it or not not even the people that watch this show are smart enough to know what the actual yield would be let's just say on the 10 year it would be nowhere near where it is now it would be exponentially higher and what would that do it would cause uh, <laughs> a stock market value to probably be about two-thirds of what it is now maybe even less than that 
um, you know, many years ago, I don't even know how many now, I said the Dow at one point was going to hit 6,000. I still believe that we can potentially hit Dow 6,000. Why Dow 6,000? Well, that's when this Federal Reserve stepped in last time, if you recall, to start propping all this up um, after the 2008 meltdown with quantitative easing one. Uh, since Dow 6,000, all of this has been propped up and faked. So would it surprise anyone to see a retest of Dow 6,000 at one point? Well, I don't think so. I don't think that's too far-fetched at all. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. Now, I also said, I believe the potential for gold to hit twice the Dow uh, exists, and it's a very real possibility. So if we have Dow 6,000, well, just do the math, and you can see where gold will go, potentially, in a worst case scenario. And I, uh, like I said, I think we're marching into it because no one seems to want to address the darn thing. All they're doing is making this worse. And that's the mechanism. It's a fleecing mechanism. Uh, cash goes into the stock market. It's an incredible bubble. And it will come out of the stock market. Uh, and it's just a way that the Federal Reserve transfers wealth from one group of people to another group of people. It's very sad. But this is the same scenario that's played out over and over again, but never to this degree. This is beyond anything we've ever seen. And unlike some people who point out some of the frailties and the uh, distortions that you've just described, but say in their remedy, they say a runaway, get out, get out, get out, get out of the market and just sit on a pile of physical precious metals. You don't stop there. You say, well, why don't we take advantage of this situation that's being presented to us? And so what do you... <laughs> How, what's the compromise you offer people? Because you do say that you see, for example, physical silver and physical gold and becoming your own central bank uh, as being the right thing to do. Um, yeah. But meanwhile, with these inflated markets. Yeah, well, keep, I, it's the gift that keeps on giving because we know what they're going to do. Look, I, it, it should be no secret to anyone here that at least knows your work. They probably know mine as well. One time. I have been wrong calling the Federal Reserve in all the years since this whole thing started once. Nobody anywhere that I know of on, on, on Wall Street, on the mainstream financial channels has a better record than me. And that's because I know what they're going to do. We, we all know what they're going to do. They are going to continue to inflate. And these incremental uh, hikes that we're getting to the federal funds rate, they're almost meaningless. And they're only being done now so the Federal Reserve can maintain some kind of credibility like they have some kind of control over the markets all they're doing is buying debt buying debt buying look the federal reserve has one product one and one only and that is debt and they continue to issue it in greater and greater amounts because our we're out of we've run we're done here in the united states what are we doing here we're running trillion dollar deficits now this is what's being projected yep. debts are exploding i've been explaining this to people for the longest time Every, you know when people told me i was wrong oh no Donald Trump is going to fix this one. No, he's not. There's no fixing this. It can't be fixed. We are so beyond the point of fixing this. But since we know this and we know the market is not real, well, get in here. And, you know, and I'm not saying people should jump in here blindly or get eaten alive. But I try to make it my business to uh, explain the inner workings of these markets uh, and how people can take advantage of them. And I even post all my own positions on my website, not for people to mimic them, although some people try to do that, but so people can use these as a guide as to set up their own. I, I trade credit spreads now exclusively with this, with this volatile market. It's very difficult to buy like a naked call, naked put. I did that for a very, very long time. You got to be on top of the market to do that. I, it became too stressful for me. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to trade credit spreads. And I've been doing this for months and months. Uh, with a great success, anyone that follows my work knows this is true. I'm not making it up, not pulling it out of the hat. Um, so just take advantage of the gift that keeps on giving right now and take those profit, those profits, pull them out and convert them into hard assets. I don't care what they do to gold. I don't care what they do to silver in the short run. Good, good. The, the more they want to suppress these prices, the more they want to rig it. At least five banks in the last year have been caught rigging. Mm -hmm. Uh, precious metal market, the precious metal market. Good. Let them keep continue to do that too, because right now we have risk on. That risk on is going to turn to risk off at one point. And those of us here that have been holding this stuff for years, you, will, I've been hoarding this stuff for years. 
I'm going to continue to do that um, because the, it's going to change from a risk on to a risk off. When risk off kicks in, no one's really smart enough. And I, I know I put my target here with regard to the goal being twice the Dow uh, at one point here, but it may be higher than that. We don't know. Uh, it, it depends on how badly um, the, the, the fiat currency melts down. And it seems like there's a race to the bottom here, despite the fact that we've seen the dollar get stronger lately. There's always that knee jerk into the dollar when things get really bad. So, like, for example, today, the dollar got pretty strong in the market. In fact, that's what put a lot of pressure on the stock market was the stronger dollar. Bond market was close. So it wasn't the bond market uh, doing that. But when, when I see that, when I see those the knee jerk into the dollar, I start thinking, okay, what's going on here? Why are we seeing this here? Is there something out there that the market is smelling? It might be. So we need to we need to keep our eyes open here. We've certainly had a lot of uh, other viewer, or a lot of guests on, such as Rob Kirby, talking about uh, major countries, other economies in the world, China, uh, Saudi Arabia, and others turning away from the dollar and, and Russia and trying to uh, get out of the U.S. debt and get out of U.S. dollars and start transacting in their own currencies and so on. So, yeah, you're right. One of these times, it'll be it'll be uh, a major major turning point instead of just another another uh, step in that direction. Unfortunately. It's going to lead to war. Um, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we fought wars to establish the petrodollar. I think this is the, the look. Why are countries around the world arming themselves? Why are we arming our arming ourselves? Uh, the world is moving closer and closer. I think to a to a major conflict again, unfortunately. And uh, I hate war. I don't want to see it happen. But it seems like uh, that's what they push us into when all when all things fail. What do they do? They bring us to war. Uh, very sad. Very sad. If we could turn our attention to some viewers' questions, uh, we've got quite a few. I'll just try to pick a few from the list here um, and uh, toss them out to you. Um, yeah. Stuart Ogilvy asks, "Where do you see the ten-year Treasury bond over the next couple of weeks, and also the dollar?" <laughs> well, you know, this these these are what I've been talking about here. These are the flies in the ointment. The ten-year yield. They're going to continue to at least try to suppress this for as long as they can. The longer they can keep that the yield suppressed, um, the more cash is going to flow into the stock market, depending on the dollar as well, too. Um, there is a, see, what people need to understand, and I've outlined this a million times on my blog, there exists, and no one talks about it. I'm probably the only guy that I, that, that I know of that talks about there is a compensatory mechanism that exists between what the 10-year yield is doing and what the dollar is doing. Now, we can see right now the 10-year yield is 3.18 as of the time we're doing this video here. Um, we can see that 10-year yield creep up as long as the dollar doesn't continue to get stronger and it not affect the stock market. If we see a 10-year yield, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, and that dollar is getting stronger, this is going to weigh on stocks beyond any shadow of a doubt. This is why I have these charts. They're live on my website, traderschoice.net. I urge people to go look at them. They're, there's no sign-ups. It's free. Go take advantage of it. It's important. But yes, we got to watch for that compensatory mechanism that exists. You cannot look at any one element of this market uh, as an entity among itself. You have to always weigh other things against it. And this is where this becomes kind of like a science in a way, but it's a pretty simple thing to understand how dollar strength uh, affects, what will, will, will affect the, bond, the stock market in relationship to what's happening with the 10 year yield. And I meant to mention, you just mentioned the uh, 10 year yield uh, today, and I forgot to mention at the beginning that today is Monday, November 12th, 2018, Veterans Day. So thank you for reminding me to get back in there. Uh -huh. okay. um, there's a question here. Uh, Bobby Blake asks, some are saying that JP Morgan will soon be ready to let the price of silver go parabolic and that they are, in fact, net long on silver now. Do you think this is true or are there many other influences to the spot price of physical? I've been hearing this for a long time, too. Um, you know, look, this is what I do know. Um, there has been an enormous effort for quite a long time to keep the price of precious metals suppressed. Could any of us really imagine 
what the price of physical would be based upon the the incredible amount of fiat currency that has flooded the world over the past uh, 10 years. It's unbelievable. Meanwhile, the prices are down. It's obviously not real. Um, with with regard to uh, there being net longs here, uh, you know, you, you, if you look at the open interest on here, I mean, even that's not real. If you look at the options market, if we're talking about physical gold and physical silver, I don't believe anything I hear. I want to see it. And I just know for the I know this like I know anything else that we're going to see a risk off at one point. We can't continue in this the market the way it is. Can't continue. So instead of focusing on what the price action of, of these assets is and what who may be net long or who might be net short or what banks are rigging it, just say good. Keep on rigging it. Go, do it more. Uh, the lower the price, they want to push it lower, great. The happier I'm going to become. Because I know down the line here, this is going to reverse and it's going to reverse big. I don't think about, honestly, I don't think about the price of gold anymore. Because what are you going to look at? The derivatives? Because that's where the, the physical is going to get its, its uh, price from. It's insane. We're talking about a paper market. It doesn't exist. It's not on the elemental chart. But meanwhile, it's, it's stringing along the price here of physical. Uh, and that's how they've been, been able to do this. So don't even think about it. Just understand where we are down the line for the long run. Become your own central bank. Bet against the debt. And, and just realize that at one point, this is going to this is going to reverse and reverse big time. This is even a more, uh, and so for some people, more physical asset, and that's the homes. Uh, Cleta Smith yep. says, when the reset comes, should be a safe. It should be a safe assumption that most banks are going to be in very deep trouble. Uh, that during this time, markets will tank and investors left scrambling. Unemployment is going to increase dramatically. Huge numbers of people defaulting on their mortgages. What happens to the enormous numbers of mortgages being held by banks in those various investment vehicles? Can banks actually throw out all those who are delinquent out of their homes, leaving the banks with large numbers of unoccupied properties for which there are no buyers? Or do they pursue some other option? What will likely happen to all those mortgages and all the people living in those homes who cannot pay? Well, they're the same thing like last time. Do you know? Do you know what they were thinking about doing during the, the 2008 uh, crash? They were thinking about bulldozing entire neighborhoods. They wanted to bulldoze neighborhoods um, of houses that were getting foreclosed on, so it would it would shorten the supply up. Uh, they'll do anything, and people look. People are going to lose here. The middle class, unfortunately, is going to lose. It's very sad, and that's what people need to be ready for. And they need to be ready for a worst-case scenario to unfold. Martial law, pandemonium in the streets, that's what has the potential to unfold here, um, again, in a worst-case scenario. And I don't see a way out of it. Uh, there's no save, saving grace. There's no, no one's going to hold anyone's hand here. Um, unfortunately, I think it's going to end horribly. People are going to end up in the streets. They're going to lose their jobs. The banks are going to confiscate everything. They never lose. The banks will consolidate power. We're going to see less banks at one point. A lot of unions, just like they did in 2008, you know, they, they married a lot of banks together. Uh, Bear Stearns, J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm, for example, mm -hmm. was one. I mean, they, and they're, we're going to get more of that. More it's all about they're all going to consolidate power here. Um, so people need to understand where we're at. And, and, and you know, I wish I knew what we can really do look the our government is does not have our best interest in our in in their mind i don't care who sits in that pretty white house it doesn't matter i think when someone is running for election maybe they have one type of a vision in their head this is why they say a lot of things during the campaign which uh kind of get flipped around completely like where did it go when mm -hmm. they get in the office it's very sad so we have to look out for ourselves at the same time we have to understand that this really is supposed to be a government of the people by the people for the people we can't put our faith in any of the imbeciles that's what they are that are uh, who are running our, our country at this time any of them um it's, it's a sad thing that we're seeing unfortunately it looks like we're on a a, 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 a tailspin here uh in on, on a global level that's going to wreak havoc on everyone. And however, unfortunately, like I said, I think we're going back to a feudal system. I really believe we're going back to a two-tier system. Uh, the haves, the have-nots. Middle class has been a slave class for a very, very long time. Um, 
That's what it looks like to me. That goes into our last question, and that probably answers our last question. Old World Orders asks, how long after a collapse, assuming there will be a credit freeze till trade resumes and food, fuel, et cetera, are readily available again? That's a great question because I do believe that's going to happen. We're going to get another credit freeze just like we did had last time. Cash won't be, be available. ATMs will shut down. Um, and what's the Fed going to do? Print more cash out of thin air? That's the issue. They're going, there's going to have to be a new system uh, put in place somehow. Uh, they did this during the Soviet Union. They had a similar meltdown where they actually had to, uh, they, they, they would turn in $10 of whatever currency they had. I'm just using a number here. And they got one back uh, in the new system. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's what's going to happen here too at one point here. And, and again, it'll be the middle class who suffers here. The, the people at the upper end there, they're already well positioned for this. Uh, they have been for a very, very long time. They're the first ones out the door. The last ones out the door, unfortunately, is going to be the middle class. I'm not referring to the lower class because they don't have any investments. These people got nothing already. And that's what they're trying to turn us, the rest of this into. Said, it really is. I think the potential for uh, conflict in the streets of every nation on earth uh, uh, rises every single day that these distortions in this market get worse. And in the face of that, you, you stress that people need to take care of themselves, take care of each other and be charitable. That's how you sign off every Friday uh, evening. And, uh, yeah. and the way that you teach people how to do that is by being the Robin Hood of Wall Street. So where can people find your work and, and follow your, uh, your guide in that, in that regards? Yeah, well, that's the truth. Let me leave off here with that, too. The, all this stuff here, what is it? If we don't understand that we are all responsible for each other, and if we embrace that, if we love each other, care about each other, and be charitable, we'll all be better off no matter how bad this unfolds. So, um, of, of course, it's important to, to, to be able to take care of yourself here. But again, in a worst-case scenario, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to make it. Uh, it's, it, there's a human bubble that exists here too, uh, which has been created on the back of the debt bubble. And it's not, it's, it's going to come down to a resource issue. Not that there's not enough of them, but we all transact in, in this fiat currency. I think we need to start thinking, uh, outside the box and transact in something else. And it's, it, I know they, that's what they wanted to do with cryptocurrencies and try to, uh, you know, create a decentralized thing. Uh, Wall Street's already got their claws all around this mm -hmm. with regards mm -hmm. to the Bitcoin futures. I outline this for everyone blow by blow, how it happened. I got laughed at, but of course I was 100% correct. Uh, it's, it's an incredible thing. But um, start, I don't know, understanding there's other ways to obtain things that you might need. Maybe, you know, look, I'm not smart enough to live off the grid or anything like that by a long shot. But that might be something that people need to think about uh, in a worst case scenario. D get less dependent on the machine. Uh, uh, that's all I can say. And for, for me, you know, with, with these markets, I try to take advantage of it. I try to make it very simple for everyone. So go to my website. Everything's free there. All the charts that I have there are free for you to use. Um, my stock screener is free for you to use. I post my own positions there so you can use them as a guide. Um, to I'm really trying to make this simple for people. Because, again, this my philosophy is we are all responsible for each other. So this is how I do it. I'm trying to let people say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's not so hard. Maybe I can do this too. Well, we've been delighted for your visit here again, Greg. We're speaking with Greg Manarino, the Robin Hood of Wall Street and the owner of TradersChoice.net. Check it out. Greg, thanks for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Great to be here. Thank you. Does your family ever get exasperated with you for stockpiling such things as paper towels, bottled water, or toilet tissue? Well, they certainly can't object to you stockpiling money. Silver, the only money recognized by the U.S. Constitution. And your first 10-ounce purchase of pure silver can be had at spot price with no premium by going to sdbullion.com rp. And when you buy it that way, you'll be supporting reluctant preppers as well by going to sdbullion.com rp. Thanks.